SOS. Have the Minnesota Wild hit rock bottom? Kirsten and I delve into more of the Wild's woes before the team heads across the pond for the 2023 NHL Global Series in Sweden. Plus, should we send in a squad to safely remove Connor McDavid from Edmonton? All of that and more in this week's episode of Bardown Beauties, which is created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Livia, Royal Credit Union, Jim Beam, and Grain Belt. You're listening to episode 203, season 5. Want a surefire sign it's hockey season in the state of hockey? The Minnesota Wild and Soda Stick collaborations are back and better than ever. Soda Stick unveiled its first team-issued design of the year, the Deweys, now available to purchase exclusively at the Hockey Lodge. More team-centric gear to come, plus as always, Soda Stick has you geared up for all things Minnesota sports at SodaStick.com. Don't forget to smash that code BARDOMBEAUTIES at checkout for 15% all purchases at SodaStick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart, Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Claremont, Kentucky. Everybody. Yeah, that's a much more defeated, deflated, hello introduction to another episode of Bar Down Beauties. Why, Kirsten? Because the Minnesota Wild have me defeated and deflated. Uh, episode 203, this is Jesse Pierce, writer for NHL.com, forced to watch the travesty that is the Minnesota Wild night in and night out. She's Kirsten Kroll, also forced to watch the Wild night in and night out uh, as face in, in arena host for your Minnesota Wild. Kirsten, again, we don't like to belabor on past games. For the record, you were correct in your wild weekly prediction. We'll get those for coming up this week, but you did guess they would go one and four, which they did. I guess two, one and one, which they did not. Uh, the struggles continue. Most recent Dallas Stars, eight to three, absolute thrashing of your Minnesota Wild, including five power play goals, two shorthanded. Kirsten, how upset are you this morning? I think for me, I'm not upset because I didn't know how bad it was going to be. I will say that, but I didn't expect them to beat Dallas. I think part of that was at the time when the prediction was made, Jared Spurgeon for one was still questionable. And then just knowing how the defense had been overall, not great. Top performers on the team, not performing, period. So I was just... I was feeling indifferent. I feel kind of indifferent this morning, but that was brutal. It was brutal. Again, go watch the Buttes breakdown for me coming a little unhinged. I maybe let emotions get the best of me in yesterday's. I don't think I've ever been that harsh on the players, but it was deserved. Um, You know, that leads me to the big question for this week's episode. Is this kind of feel like rock bottom? I know it's it's still fairly early into the season, but we're hitting the midpoint of November here. Uh, Minnesota, three straight losses. They've lost nine of their past 11. Terrible play. Cannot start a game to save their life. They have no defense. Is this rock bottom? Does this feel a little bit like rock bottom? And can they come back up from this rock bottom? Or are they going to keep pushing on down and finding something lower yet? You know, it's weird because I don't feel like we've hit rock bottom yet. And I'm still, I've been very pessimistic But at the same time, like, I feel like there's a bit of optimism lying ahead, like very pessimistic, but there's some silver linings too that I'm feeling. I feel like the wild are going to turn it around. I don't know at what point that's going to be. I don't think we started last season off this bad. It was bad, but not this bad, but we've kind of been here before. So I think because of that territory, I'm reserving my very, what are we doing like, where are we at kind of feelings? I think rock bottom would be missing the playoffs altogether, which we still could do. Um, I mean, yeah. And then losing all of our top players to injury. Not e- not all of them. That's a little dramatic. I pray that doesn't happen. But, you know, losing more players to injury. We got Jared Spurgeon back now. So that is something to be positive about. But I don't think we're quite there, but we could be getting close. I only feel it's close because, again, like I mentioned, we're reaching that midpoint. The Minnesota Wild have played the most games in the Central Division. They've got 15 games under their belt. They're 5-8-2, and two, just above Chicago and just above Nashville. Chicago's played two less games. Nashville has played one less game. That means St. Louis, Arizona, 
Winnipeg above your Minnesota Wild. Dallas and Colorado, obviously up there. They're tremendous. I think Dallas, for what we saw last night and what I've seen from them, they're for sure going to the Western Conference Final, if not the representative from the West in the Stanley Cup Final. They just are good in every area. Um, but that's my concern. Like, nothing has changed. You can't, you haven't been able to change a darn thing that have been plaguing this team all along. I've mentioned before, Jared Spurgeon wasn't going to be your solution. He no. wasn't going to come in and turn this thing around, and he hasn't. And that's not on Spurge at all. That's on Jake Middleton, who has played atrocious defensively after like two good games to start the season. Uh, that's even on your forwards not being able to get back and cover the man. That's on Kirill Kaprizov turning the puck over in the neutral zone. We're going to get to Kaprizov and Boldy as well. But while we're talking about rock bottom Minnesota Wild, does this put our boy Dean on the hot seat at all? Do you think I'm, I'm never eager to be like, we got to fire the coach. This is a coaching problem. But as they proved in Edmonton, the coach is the one that's going to have to wear the losses, the heaviest as Jay Woodcroft is ousted over there. Mm -hmm. Is Dean seat getting a little warm now, considering how they've performed to start this season and looking back into his tenure as head coach in general for the Minnesota wild. Realistically, I don't think it is. I think I don't want to say the relationships within the organization are strong because I don't know exactly if that's what it is, but I don't think they're all they being upper management ready to just strictly point the finger at Dean. Um, but I think it should be. I think all of the coaches jobs right now should probably be feeling a little under pressure. I feel everyone's seat should be getting warm because realistically on paper, this team is not that much different than last year's. But right now, no one is able to do a dang thing. And I don't know what else that comes down to besides coaching right now. I mean, to make you feel even worse about this team, they have the second worst goal, dif goal differential. Uh, San Jose, who we completely trashed last week, is the only team that has a worse one. I think Minnesota's got 64. San Jose's got 67 goals allowed. Uh, you had mentioned maybe other coaches on the hot seat. And again, because we're sweet, kind girls, I preface this by saying I like everybody as a human being with this Minnesota Wild organization. I haven't met a bad human there. That includes Bob Woods. But with the penalty kill being absolutely abysmal, abominable, if you will, uh, dead last, I believe. Let me let me confirm. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Dead last at 63.5% effectiveness. The PK was bad last year. It's worse this year. And I think that comes down to Bob Woods. And I would not be surprised if that's the first coach or that's the first kind of big shakeup that Bill Guerin needs. I don't know who comes in to replace that uh, at this point in the season, but that's what I'd look at. We have a penalty kill because based on the game against <laughs> Dallas, I had no idea. What was it? Five power play goals, two shorties allowed. I so bad. It was so bad. I didn't know we had a penalty kill. So, yeah, that being said, absolutely, that's something we should be taking a look at. Yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens. Now, again, this also comes down to the players. Let's start with one who is getting paid $7 million per year, uh, signed that big seven-year extension last year to get that raise, deservedly so. That person, Mr. Matt Boldy, or I will say barely there Boldy, as I'm calling him right now, because – where has he gone? You know, this is, you know, we certainly have put pressure. He has risen his expectations bar year after year. He said he's never felt that pressure, but Matt Boldy certainly injured early on in the season came back and hasn't really looked like himself. Hasn't been generating the offense. Hasn't been creating the offense. He looked, there were brief glimpses of the way that he could cut into the center when he was with Marco Rossi and Kirill Kaprizov. But Kirsten, I've been very, very unimpressed with Matt Boldy so far through these 15 games. I would agree with that. I mean, we've talked about this time and time again. When you get paid a contract like that, the expectations rise. You need to be performing to the caliber that you are expected to. We've seen nearly nothing from Matt Boldy this season. And it's kind of, I liked him on that top line with Kaprizov and Rossi, definitely. But we need to be seeing more from you. And I just, I don't know what it's going to take. I don't know what lines you need to shake up in order for him to do something I feel like it's that meme with the stick and you're poking something that's dead and you're like do something and nothing's happening like that's how I'm feeling right now 
Yeah, Matt Boldy, one of a number of players to have just one freaking goal on the year. I mean, you just need more from him, especially if you do look at him as kind of that second or third man up, right? That's what that second line is supposed to do. They're supposed to rise to the occasion when Kirill Kaprizov is getting completely shut down, when you need to, I mean, you need to be generating offense and you need to be generating on special teams. Matt Boldy on power play one, they need to be doing something. And he's a guy, especially because like you said, Kirsten, he's getting paid those big bucks. Well, prove it to me. That's all I'm asking. Just, I said it in the breakdown, freaking do something. Like I just need to see a little bit more. That brings us to Kirill Kaprizov, uh, the highest paid player on the Minnesota Wild, the superstar of the Minnesota Wild. We've talked about him being MIA. He's not MIA anymore. He's just been average, which I think is almost worse, right? Like it's very frustrating to watch Kirill Kaprizov gripping the stick as tightly as he is. He's got just five goals in these 15 games played, but that's not even the concerning factor. It's just the way that he's playing. He is trying almost too hard to be cute. The amount of turnovers in the neutral zone. I didn't even know he was capable of turning the puck over, let alone as many times as he has so far this season. And it's concerning. I mean, Dean Evson doesn't want to say that aloud, but it has to be pretty freaking concerning when your best, best player can't do anything to get momentum and especially your best player who is wearing the a for all the right reasons but he is just stuck in the mud and i don't know what can be done to get out of it he just kind of seems almost disinterested in pushing himself through which is very different from the Kirill Kaprizov that we know and love yeah absolutely i don't know i don't know what the situation is right now i don't know what you do because i feel this season too with the way Kirill's been playing, I feel he's been given the benefit of the doubt way more than he should have. If he was any other player on the team, he probably would have been demoted to another line by now. Mm -hmm. um, it's just for somebody everyone expects to be a superstar. He is absolutely not performing. Like when you look around the league, superstars get through whatever they're going through. Connor McDavid, look at his situation and look what he's still able to do. Austin Matthews doing things. And we talked too. I know we were going to talk about it. So this is a little bit foreshadowing, but even Connor Bedard, like right now, everything he's been doing unreal. So I know last year, everyone came for my throat because I was like, Kirill Kaprizov, I think is a star, but I don't think right now he is the superstar. Everyone says he is. And I, at this point in the season, definitely stand by what I said. Think about me what you will. Be mad at me for saying that. But he hasn't done anything superstar caliber this season. Like, where are you at? It's just the way he's been playing, it's been really unacceptable. If he was any other player, he would not still be on the top line. And I mean, to give him somewhat of the benefit of the doubt, He's this has happened before, right? He's had kind of the scoreless slumps. And again, that's the least concerning part of it. And usually he's been able to get himself out. He hasn't been able to get himself going at all this year. He is minus 11 cursed. And I know people have a love hate relationship with plus minus, but minus 11 because he's turning the puck over and allowing goals scored. It's absolutely ridiculous. That is not something that your superstar should be doing. Yes. You all have bad games and yes, it takes an entire team and Kirill Kaprizov can't be expected year after year to necessarily, you know, take everything on his shoulders. But he also can be at the same time. I'm not afraid to say that about him because that's the player that he wants to be. That's the player he's proven to be. He just hasn't acted like that player yet this year, which brings me to our final point, second to last final point, I guess, if you will, of this first segment of Bar Down Beauties. Um, the top six forwards in general stink. Like, I'm not afraid to say that, right? The bottom six are holding their own. Vinny Terry's doing good things. Uh, Pat Maroon we've talked about before. Connor Dewar or Brandon Newham. I mean, those guys are doing what they need to be doing as their bottom six forward role. You're not seeing that out of your top six. What the actual F? No, I don't. Under that It makes no sense to me. Like your bottom six are really holding this team together. And then just the top two lines. I, I don't even know what to say. It doesn't make any sense. But then now too, just something too, that's fresh in my mind because of the Dallas game yesterday. Then you have Brandon Duhame taking a stupid penalty, just the dumbest hockey play I've seen from him and probably ever getting the game misconduct potentially can't play now in Sweden. We'll see how that goes, mm -hmm. but it's just like, you can't be doing stuff like that, especially when he started the game gets first goal of the game is one of the players that's actually contributing. And then you take like, I don't know. It's just frustrating. It is frustrating. And you can see the frustration starting to mount in the locker room. I mean, speaking with Jared Spurgeon yesterday, who again, 
it's not on his shoulders. He's just gotten back and he's been watching this from up top with us when I'm sure he's just as frustrated, but you can just feel the frustration oozing out of that room, which obviously we all know isn't how you're going to turn things around, but also nothing that they've done has worked. The line changes I thought worked well. I would have stuck with those a little bit longer than Dean has. And maybe we see them go back to that come the Swedish trip uh, this week. But yeah, that's, I don't know what to do. I really don't. And I think Dean's at a little bit of a loss, like, because at the end of the day, it comes down to the players. The guys need to find it within themselves. They need to change the tides. There's no reason that they can't go. And I'm not saying you're going to go in and win every single game, but you're going to win some of those battles. You're going to tr- look like you're actually playing a national hockey league caliber game. And lately they have not looked like that. I mean, go back to the Buffalo game, Rangers game too. I mean, no, it's just, it's beyond, beyond frustrating. And we'll see. I mentioned Sweden. Well, you know what? Save room for some Swedish meatballs. Kirsten, Minnesota Wild, over for the 2023 Global Series in Stockholm. Obviously, Minnesota. You got Philip Gustafsson, Jules Eriksson Eck, Marcus Johansson, and uh, who am I missing? I'm missing, missing somebody. Jonas Brodin. Jonas Brodin. <laughs> Brodes uh, from Sweden. So their family and friends will be in attendance. How much do you think this changes that vibe, though? Like, they're going over. I believe they leave today. They'll kind of arrive on Tuesday, their first game's not till Saturday against the Ottawa Senators. Then they got Toronto on Sunday. And this is supposed to be a very fun, like cultural experience too, right? I mean, you're practicing obviously, but this has to change a lot of the vibe that you have going over there, you know, and it's not so much about being a tourist as it is figuring your out. Yeah. I think it definitely changes the vibe. I think, I hope it changes the vibe too, in the sense that like, especially when a lot of these players are going to be playing in front of family and friends that never get to see them in person play that that changes where they, you know, skate a little harder, uh, play a little harder. And if you don't beat the Ottawa senators, my God, <laughs> I, who that shouldn't be a question. You should be able to at least beat Ottawa when you are over in Sweden, Toronto. That's a completely other story. That's, but yeah. I, if the vibes are not good heading into the game against Ottawa, then maybe that's rock bottom. And I bet you see Philip Gustafson in that game just for the storytelling dramatics, yada, yada. Um, let's start with our, let's start with our predictions first, and then we'll talk a little fun Sweden. Kirsten, what do you think the predictions are going into this week for your Minnesota Wild against Ottawa and Toronto? One and one. I think they Simple. get the win against Ottawa. They better look at me, look at in, in the camera <laughs> talking to y'all get the win against Ottawa. If you don't, I, I don't know what to tell you. And then they're going to lose to Toronto. Toronto is Toronto. Very good. Oh, and two. I'm done. I'm done. You've killed me. You've killed my spirit. I'm done. Oh, and two. You're not going to win either game. So thanks. That's the thanks tea. That. That's that's how I'm feeling. Again, I'm probably still a little salty, still a little emotional. Just, yeah, that's that's how I'm feeling today. So Kirsten's got one and one. I got 0 and 2 because the Wild are off then for a very long time, especially for us. They don't come back. They play Colorado the 29th, which will be very exciting. So that's, you know, neat. We'll talk about those later. You were looking like I was. Was I wrong? Am I wrong? I thought they played Colorado on Black Friday. They do play like Colorado on Black Friday. That's what I'm saying. They just have these two games and then they like have. But that's not the 29th. And now the 29th. What is it? The 19th? Yeah, it's the 29th. The, the 26th. I, no, the 24th. It's 24th. the 24th. Okay, but that's still a really long time away. <laughs> it is, but it's not the 29th. I was But like, I wow, just, I was really? concerned there was a game in between that and there's not. There's no game in no. between the Sweden and then they come back against Colorado on Black Friday. Yes. Honestly, thank God, because I also need a break. I need to mentally decompress. Mm. I'm going to fix my office. As you guys can see, it's a very different scenario in here, but it's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. I finally got some jerseys to hang up. My Mark Ooh. Messier jersey is no longer on the floor. Oh, I know. Terrible. Uh, and then before we wrap up the segment, Kirsten, I need to know, who would you want to be your Swedish tour guide? Now, you love two of these four players I beyond know, that's all why I Richard. Don't so. Know. Is it Eric Sinek? Is it Jojo? Is it Gus or is it Broads? Who is your tour guide in Sweden? See, you know, it's between Brodeen and Jewel. I do. I love Jewel. Like, I just, I adore him. And then Brodeen, I love him too. And he potentially Swift. Maybe he'll, yeah, maybe he'll play Taylor Swift. He probably won't, but maybe he will. He probably will. Gosh, I don't know. Oh, man. You know you what? Pick. 
I know I do. I don't know which one though. I would love both of them. I'm going to go with Brodine. Broads? I want him to be my tour guide. That sounds, I think that would be fair. I, I would say Broads or I'd go, I'd go Gus Bus. Him and I have our halloumi cheese fascination. Yeah, you, you got that cheese thing going you got for the you. the cheese thing. But it was funny because I talked to all, I talked to three of the four. I didn't get a chance to talk to Johansson. But I talked to them all about going over to Sweden. And Broads was the most kind of like personable about it. So I'm almost like maybe you would be more, smidge more fun. But Gus. Get him on the pod. He's like my top. I just feel he and I would really hit it off. All right, Dylan, that's our next, that's a simple ask. We can ask for Broads. Simple ask. Simple that's- ask. And we need to know if he's a Swifty. That's really the I, only reason. Oh, if he says no. You oh. know what? It's going to be as fake as their relationship's going to turn out to be. I'm sorry. Oh, that was harsh. <laughs> like Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. You're saying yeah. that's fake? I don't uh, know. Man, it's a little, it feels a little. After seeing the Argentina show, there was no. no possible way that is fake. I was at a girl's brunch yesterday. I legitimately, <laughs> like, I teared up talking about it. Like, I've been very emotional be this real. weekend. I cried over Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. I wanted to, be, but no, it just felt it. it felt odd to do it like outside the t- like I don't know. It just feels a little pre. There's I no hope it's man not. that's going on his bye weekend when he gets two full days off because he had to spend the whole Sunday flying back to be for practice today. There's no way any man is going to go to Argentina for two days and watch a concert for a PR stunt. And that concludes this week's edition of What Kirsten Thinks About Taylor Swift. Uh, We're going to take a quick break. Uh, When we come back, let's take a look around the league. Stay tuned. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce here for Livia Weight Control Centers. It is time to give yourself the gift of good health. It's Livia's pre Black Friday event. Join Livia today and get up to 50% off your own personalized program. That's right. 50% off your own personalized program. Livia has been a proven doctor recommended weight loss program voted number one year after year. Make the call and you could lose up to 10 pounds in your first two weeks or even up to 20 pounds before the year 2024. Talk about one heck of an offer to kick off the new year. I know for me, Livia has been an absolute game changer. Thanks to the one-on-one support I've received from my team at the Livia Center in Woodbury, I've lost more than 30 pounds and gotten back the energy this busy mom of three needs to get through yet another NHL hockey season. I'm telling you guys, this sign-up is one you do not want to miss. Join Livia today and save up to 50%. Visit Livia.com, that's L-I-V-E-A.com, or call 855-GO-LIVIA. This is a limited-time offer, so be sure you join right now. Visit Livia.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. Livia. Livia is voted Minnesota's best weight loss program three years in a row. Check it out. We're back. Let's take a look around the National Hockey League. Kirsten, first things first, we need to save our boy Con. We've been talking about it from the get go. Uh, Connor McDavid, the world continues to crumble beneath him in Edmonton. Jay Woodcroft out as head coach uh, after a grim loss to the San Jose Sharks. The Oilers did beat the Seattle Kraken after their loss to the Sharks, but they are just 3-9-1 and one, and 2-7-1 and one in their past 10 games, have not won a game at home, and uh, that's just that's just not good. Just not good at all. This is like the fourth coach in five years for Edmonton, too. Poor Con. Poor Con. I, what do we need to do to save him from Edmonton? Like, I remember when... Save Kaprizov from Russia was a thing where we were about to, you guys were about to go over and save him just to make sure we Marcus could Marcus Foligno said he was going to go over to Russia and save him. Yes, he did tell yes. us that. That's facts, yeah. Just bring him back. How do we pull Khan? Like, what mission do we need to do? Because I'm willing to. I bet you, I mean, I'm surprised him and Leon haven't been like, hey, we're done. Like, we are so freaking out of here. And not I to mention. I feel there has to be closed door conversations where both of them are like. It's it's honestly it's probably I think it's a lost cause at this point. I think in Edmonton you just need to blow everything up and start completely over. I mean Edmonton ranks 29th in the NHL in goals allowed per game, 3.92 ahead of only the Minnesota Wild and San Jose Sharks. So that's good for the Wild too, Very. right? Um, it is. Yeah, no, I'm I don't know what they do either. I know that they've got Chris Knobloch coming in as head coach. He was the replacement. He was head coach of Hartford, the New York Rangers AHL affiliate. He had coached Connor McDavid when uh Khan was in the OHL, so maybe that helps. And then you got a Hall of Famer Paul Coffey coming in as assistant. But yeah, 
like Edmonton shouldn't be that bad, but it's also when you're going through that many coaches, it's not, it doesn't seem to be a coaching problem then. Cause I think Jay Woodcroft is a very good coach. Ah, uh, you know, a thought came across my mind. Oh boy. What if Khan is a cancer in the locker room? Do we think so? Like I, we don't know, do we right? Think, do we think Khan is the problem? I mean, you usually, that's funny because if it weren't Connor McDavid, you would easily quickly point to something like that, right? Like, hey, they've mm-hmm. gone through all these coaches and they still can't win. Like, he's too quiet to be a cancer, though. But it's always the quiet ones. I mean, I think they're probably. And he's goes... a Nickelback fan. <laughs> That's the. We've solved the problem. They've been, they've been playing too much Nickelback in the locker room, and the team just hasn't been able to collect themselves. Due Maybe to... they need to play Creed and everything will turn around in Edmonton. That sounds. Even worse. I don't know. I just worked for the mm, Vikings. It worked it for the Rangers. It's worked for some. I yikes. Yeah. That's um, my challenge for Khan. Listen to a little higher by Creed. Can you take me high? See, now you forced me to do that. Are you proud of yourself? You forced me. I'm so proud. To do now that. if I can hear Khan do that next, my world will be changed forever. I could probably do a good Khan impression of it. Can you take? higher no i feel like you gotta give it a little more oomph than that can you take me higher i feel like he's not blinking see what i'm doing there i'm not blinking like it's like that picture with machine gun kelly again because we're going (laughs) back to circa day all-star game 2021 i think is when it was like he like showed a smirk like his personality comes out in the weirdest situations i mean that's very true. I, I, <laughs> he's an he's an odd duck to me. Very robot, almost yes. like Mark Zuckerberg ish, right? Oh I just watched, no! I watched The Social Network for like the millionth time because for some reason I just love that movie. I know that's it's weird. weird. It is weird, but I just it's one of those that I just kind of really enjoy. Um, and yeah, I just kind of robotic, very robotic. Yeah. That's all. He is a little That's all I got. robotic, a little stiff. Let's stick to our other favorite con, uh, Connor Bedard. All right. Now, we all knew he was going to be absolutely ridiculous and know that hasn't made Chicago very good, but it bodes very, very well for the future. Obviously, I know the Minnesota Wild playing last night, Kirsten, but did you catch the highlight of both of his goals in the 4-3 loss to the Florida Panthers last night? But namely, the one, like, I don't know how he magically gets the puck off his stick and shoots from the angles that he shoots from and scores. Like it's, and he doesn't even look like he's surprised by it. Like I love his celebrations where he's just like, yeah, I did that. Like at 18 Mm -hmm. freaking years old, it's, it's unreal. No, he's very good. And I, I paused (laughs) for a second too, because I don't know if I actually saw this online. I don't think I did, but like, I don't know. And I'm going to sound like such a weirdo, but it could have been a dream. I literally had last night. (laughs) Of like Connor Bedard just playing guitar and he was really good. So yeah. I think I dreamt it, but it could possibly be reality. The kid's good at anything he does. And it's kind of frustrating. And it's kind of, you know what? He kind of has that look too where he's just very unfazed. Like he just kind of looks like he's the kid going through Like, but he's so, so good, which very concerning for wild fans moving forward because he's proven that he will have the ability to help Chicago steal games when they need to. I mean, he again, doesn't have quite the skill around him but god like i this isn't a surprise i'm not saying any of this is a surprise but you mm. got to consider he is the youngest player in the league going against like grown ass men and just making them look kind of foolish he looks like he's out on the pond just playing but the game who knows chicago could become the next edmonton like you could have the best player in the league and be three nine and one i mean and it's it's beyond like the goals that he's scoring too. like his hockey sense and vision is just off the chart too. Like he makes plays that I don't think Kirill Kaprizov is going to make. Certainly not this year. Kirill Kaprizov's not going to make them, but yeah, just unreal. Shout out to that con too. Con, if that con wants to come on our pod, he's welcome. Always, Always welcome. welcome. The invitation is open. I'm really sorry for all of the dog squeaking you're hearing in the <laughs> background. I kicked him out a while ago when he found his way back in. Yeah. Um, but no, Connor Bedard, you are always welcome to come on the pod. Mm. Shout out to both of our cons. One doing well, one doing poorly. 
Shame. Uh, Kirsten, before we wrap up this week's episode of Bar Down Beauties, let's hit our favorite hockey moments. I went first last week. Why don't you do the honors of going first? This For me, it was Hockey Fights Cancer Night. It's just mm. a very emotional night for everyone involved, uh, people affected, people who have had loved ones currently battling, ones who have passed, and then survivors too. Last night I was fortunate I got to meet one person currently battling and then one person who's a two-time breast cancer survivor, so shout out Patty. Mm -hmm. Um, But just the stories that you hear on those nights, and it's just very inspiring. So there, I don't think at, especially when everyone stood up doing the, I fight for signs, I don't think there was a dry eye in the arena. I know for me, I've been very emotional this weekend and that was no exception. So hockey fights, cancer night, always a very touching night. I agree. Like the emotions just run rampant, especially when everybody had, cause everyone's been affected by it, unfortunately. Right. I mean, you all know someone who knows someone or, you know, someone directly or you yourself. So, uh, hockey fights, cancer night. I'm glad they've continued that tradition in some way, shape, or form, despite kind of also, promoting. can yeah. I piggyback off of that too? Yeah, another to feel anyway. good moment that I loved. Still, sorry, <laughs> still going off of hockey fights, cancer night during warmups. How it's been prohibited <laughs> that hockey players are allowed to like wear anything kind of for the theme nights um, during warmups. I loved how Pat Maroon, Ryan Hartman, Marcus Foligno, we all know the story with Marcus Foligno and his mom, unfortunately, but just wearing the Hockey Fights Cancer apparel, I know Foligno had his steak stick taped to in honor of the theme night. So, And they had war really... hats, the three of them wore hats out on mm-hmm. to warm-ups instead of their helmets or instead of going yep. lidless. So, yeah, I saw that. That was really cool. Yeah. It's funny. I actually didn't put two and two together. That's why th- that's why they were wearing them because they couldn't do the jerseys. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, yeah. I like how they're doing the hats, but I didn't really figure it out. But now mm-hmm. I got it. Brilliant. Um, mine's a mine's a selfish selfish one. Uh, it's Tyler Sagan going crazy for my shoes. It was pretty iconic. Oh. Twice in one day, like I passed him and he was like, oh, nice kicks. And then I went into the locker room and had him and he was like, excuse me with those shoes. And I was like, yeah. What's up? They were a nice pair of green Nikes uh, that I just recently purchased. Looked fantastic with the outfit, but it's always kind of fun to like, you know, shoot the shit with opposing team members as well, right? So, shout out to Tyler Sagan. Tyler Tyler Sagan. Sagan. I sent him the link, like I, you know, shot. I don't know if that's shooting my shot, but I was like, hey, what's up? Here's the link for the kicks. So, I love Tyler. We'll see if when they come back, he's wearing them or rocking them. Maybe I'll have to rock them every time Dallas is in town. It's only right. It's only right. You guys don't forget. I'm no longer a Wild fan. I'm an Anaheim Ducks fan, though. So all in. Quack. Oh, yeah. I'm seeing. I woke up to my mentions. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone's coming for Jesse's like Ducks fan. I've been a duck. Mark. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because I had to I had to let let people know that you can stand by me. I have liked the Anaheim Ducks for quite a few years now, even when they're I've it goes back to the Ryan Getzloff days. I have this weird like crush on Ryan Getzloff, but I also just love him as a player and a leader. Like he was always one of my favorite players to interview. And then, and in entered Trevor Zegris, uh, John Gibson has been a longtime favorite. You I all know that. I was just about to say, it's honestly all John Gibson. <laughs> He's very high up on that. But I love Z. I like, I'm a big, but it started with Getzloff and then went to Gibson and then Z. And now Mason McTat. Like, holy cow, what a fun freaking group to watch. I think everybody was very curious about the Carlson pick over Fantilli, right? Like, I think we all were like, wow. No, McTavish and Carlson together on that team. Like, wow, very good. But speaking of, did you see Fantilli's goal last night? No, he's also doing well. Like, this is the first time, I think John Bucigras said it, that this is the first time in a very, very long time where he truly believes all of the top three picks are going to be incredibly, incredibly freaking successful. I know. that's a, We talked about it over the summer when we were just previewing the draft. Like, this is going to be the next iconic Mm -hmm. NHL draft class like it's unbelievable seeing all of the guys selected being able to contribute this well this early on did you see Fantilli kind of fangirl for a moment over Sagan when he no he uh, pull up the clip because you know we all fangirl over Sagan so that's just he went he went up to do the face off and he's like hey I saw you when I when you brought the cup to wherever it was in Ontario and Sagan goes oh yeah how old were you? He's like, I don't know, like six. <laughs> Which means Tyler Sagan. I guess, yeah, Tyler Sagan won the cup a long time ago. It was a long time ago. 
How so. old is Sagan? I feel like he's, he's getting younger up there than me, too. but he's over 30. He's, he's younger than, than you. He's in, I think he's younger than me. We Let's need look to look it up. Pull it Let's up. look it up, guys. Don't worry. This is why we have computers to. And again, this is just the bar down beauties answering the important things. He's 31 years old. Huh? Yeah. With his birthday being. I don't know. So I don't know if he's like coming up on. Uh, yeah, he's a 92 baby. But okay. Brampton, that's where he took it to Brampton, Canada. And that's where he is from. And I don't know why Adam Fantilli was there, but Adam Fantilli saw it in Brampton. Nah, they're both Canadian. I forget Adam Fantilli. I think because he played college hockey that I just am like, oh, yeah, he's an American. No, definitely Canadian. Well, no, but yeah, I no. encourage you to take a look at his goal from last night, too, because it was pretty. Yeah, you know what? I encourage everybody just to watch goals scored by other teams since your Minnesota Wild can't do it at all anyway. So it's nice to see somebody be able to score. <laughs> I forget what it's like at this point. Oh, God, classic. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Bar Down Beauties. Again, shout out to Talk North, Soda Stick, Livia, Jim Beam, Royal Credit Union, and Grain Belt, our next Grain Belt live show coming up in December. Thank you to everybody who came out to Dukes. We had an awesome, awesome time. Uh, a lot of free giveaways. Again, don't forget to. Stay tuned to all of our social medias. Share, like, rate this podcast. Um, and, yeah, that's that's about all I got for you. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Uh, don't forget the Swedish games are early, 10 a.m. on Saturday, 7 a.m. on Sunday. If you're feeling like getting up to watch some, some brunch hockey, that's what you can oh, do. Hockey and brunch, a combo I didn't know I needed. Earliest I've ever woken up for a hockey game was, like, 5 a.m. to watch Team USA in the Olympics. Okay. Yeah. That was worth it. They won in a shootout. Yeah, that is worth it. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a great rest of your week. We'll talk to you later. Bye.